Hello and welcome to Talking Europe. Enlargement of the European Union is one of the priorities that was outlined by Commission President von der Leyen in her speech in her State of the Union speech this September the 13th, and it's likely to become an ever more pressing issue over the next few years. So it's fitting that we should host the EU Commissioner in charge of neighborhood and enlargement, Oliver Varheli. He is a distinguished Hungarian diplomat and lawyer. He served as Hungary's ambassador to the EU, and he held prominent positions in the Hungarian Ministry of Justice and at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Commissioner Varheli, welcome to Talking Europe. Thank you very much for having me. I'd like us to listen to a quick extract of what uh, the Commission President said about enlargement in this speech and then get some reactions from you. I believe that the next enlargement must also be a catalyst for progress. We have started to build a health union at 27, and I believe we can finish it at 30 plus. We have started to build a European Defence Union by 27. I'm convinced we can finish it at 30 plus. We have proven that we can be a geopolitical union and show that we can move fast when we are united. And I believe that Team Europe also works at 30 plus. So, Commissioner, clearly quite strong signals there to countries that want to join the bloc. Do you think she could have been perhaps more specific about targets or dates? Well, um, I would uh, take um, first, I think, the context uh, in which the speech was made. Um, we've seen that um, with the war of aggression of Russia against Ukraine, um, there's a clear rethinking uh, about enlargement uh, being a priority. Uh, I think by now it is clear for everyone in Europe, not only for the leaders, but also the general public, that if Europe wants to ensure its long-term security and prosperity, it will need to enlarge. And it will need to have uh, a larger uh, population coming under the same values and creating the same area uh, for everyone in Europe of peace, stability and security. Now, if you want to look at the speech in that context, I think uh, this speech paved the way on how to achieve this. Mm. How to achieve this not in general, but how to achieve this as a mid-term or even short-term reality. And uh, yes, uh, it is very clear that we can move further even before accession. You will see proposals coming from us uh, during this autumn that will just create this possibility. I think so what... Could we be a bit more concrete perhaps about those, those plans that you have in October? Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, the, the reference the president made, for example, the, the health union. Mm. Uh, you remember that during the COVID days, uh, we uh, kept our cooperation even closer with our Western Balkan friends. Mm. We have installed green lanes with them. Uh, we have made them part of our uh, COVID certificates. We have extended our financial support uh, for them uh, in terms of building uh, the healthcare sector or their SMEs. We have helped them uh, to get to vaccines and it worked just fine. If you look at the other area, for example, energy supplies, we are now purchasing gas, for example, uh, not only us 27, but for example, Serbia is also part of this European scheme. So we can do things already before enlargement, which will prove that enlargement is for even a bigger benefit mm -hmm. for Europe. Uh, so what you will see coming is the growth plan designed for the Western Balkans, okay. which was announced by our president uh, already in Bratislava this year. And there uh, she made a very clear four pillar proposal. First of all, to create the possibility of early integration. Mm -hmm. Early integration meaning the real integration on the ground. Mm -hmm. Integration of the economy, integration of the societies, and together with the acceleration of the reforms that are necessary. Yeah. With uh, oversight of rule of law, uh, exactly. judiciary. Strengthening the reform element, which means that 
as they progress in the reform area, we could already front load a number of areas of EU aki and joining us mm. effectively in the everyday life. Mm. So we could speed up this process without waiting for the institutional process. Mm. You recently uh, visited Turkey. I wonder if you think that Turkey's place is in the European Union. And when you hear the Austrian Chancellor, as he said recently, that Turkish membership of the EU is inconceivable for us, for Austria, what do you make of statements like that? Do you agree with that? I think our line, the Commission line, because after all, uh, the Commission is, a, is an institution of the European Union, has been defined by uh, the European Council. The European Council is the one deciding on on these issues and it gives political guidance. Uh, first of all, Turkey continues to be a candidate country. Uh, however, it is also very clear uh, from the messages of the European Council that we are at a standstill uh, when it comes to uh, the enlargement process. And the reasons are also uh, listed by the European Council. Is there any change uh, on the side of those conditions being met or improved? I guess the European Council would take another look. Mm. And in that, as you know, each and every member state will have a say. I was just reading all your tweets about your visit to, to Turkey and the, the people that you met there. Um, just one thing that struck me was that you didn't mention the whole human rights uh, dimension uh, and the major concerns about the rule of law, independent media, civil society. And uh, one of your responsibilities, on, on uh, certainly on the web page of, of your, your commission web page, is promoting good governance. Um, do, do you think you should make statements in that direction more publicly, perhaps? I think uh, well, we made very clear statements. Uh, I had a, a press conference with the foreign minister yeah. uh, where the issue of, uh, of enlargement came up, and um, I made it very clear um, that um, progress on that front depends largely on progress on the rule of law area. Mm. Um, we have very clear messages uh, to Turkey on this. And unless there's improvement, there cannot be any improvement on the, um, on the side of the accession negotiations. But you seem to believe there's a lot more that the two sides could do, nonetheless, in business terms, in, in partnership and dialogue, even while the, the actual accession negotiations are at a standstill. Turkey is now at a very important juncture. And we have heard very uh, encouraging messages right after the elections from the president, but also from the new government, that they want to restart in their relationship with Europe. Um, the European Council was very quick to discuss it, and not only to discuss it, but task the Commission to create the parameters of a positive agenda with Turkey. We are supposed to go back and report to the European Council still this year what could be the areas uh, through which we could develop a positive agenda. And uh, what you have seen me doing in Turkey was to map these areas. And yes, uh, Turkey is in a customs union with us. Uh, Turkey is a very important uh, market for us. Turkey is a very important uh, um, investment country for us. Uh, Turkey is uh, a, one of the most powerful NATO allies uh, in our continent. Uh, so we have a lot in common. Mm. And if you look at geography, uh, it is very clear that uh, we are dependent on one another. So we could also uh, make use of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, for our own interests, but also for mutual interest. This is what we have tried to map in Turkey. Yeah. Let, let's talk a bit about the Tunisia-EU agreement, which is something that you've also uh, spoken about quite a bit. Uh, obviously, this agreement focuses on education skills as well as migration and borders. It was striking that in President von der Leyen's speech, the State of the Union, she mentioned smuggling, which is a, a, a big concern that you've pointed out too. And she said that legislation on smuggling is 20 years old. So that's one of the things that really needs to be upgraded, isn't it, in order to, to move forward on the smuggling point? What we see is that um, human smuggling uh, has become almost an industry. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, not only uh, in North Africa, but also, for example, on the Balkans. Yeah. So unless we find new tools to crack down on that, we will continue to have this problem uh, emerging. And the smugglers are ruthless. Yeah. For them, human life has no cost, has no value whatsoever. Mm. And what you see happening on the Mediterranean, but also what you see happening um, in the, um, on, the, on the Western Balkans, is created by the smugglers. Yeah. So, so more financial support to the countries concerned to, to help patrol their borders. Would you say that's the, the key focus that should be? Absolutely, absolutely. This is, this is our key focus, be it the Western Balkans, be it uh, our partners in North Africa, help them to create capacities to protect their borders, to crack down on organized crime, mm -hmm. to work with one another, uh, because these networks know no border, mm -hmm. uh, while they do respect their own borders. Uh, so we need to help them uh, to work together. And of course, our authorities, our police forces, our security forces should also help them to crack down these uh, international networks. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for being my guest, uh, Commissioner Oliver Varheli. And I'll be back after a short break to take a closer look at the State of the Union speech with my panel of MEPs. So do join me in a few minutes from now. Thanks for watching.